Hello, Maker Melissa, Maker Melissa's Lab. Today I'm going to be putting together the Altair Duino. I have here the Pro Model, and the Pro Model difference is that it includes this nice blue and gray case, which is closer to the original one rather than the wooden box that comes with the regular one. And it has an IO expansion board. So this should be a lot of fun. I have been looking forward to putting this together and I just wanted to share it with you, so let's get started. Okay, so what we have here is a little power supply for it. I'm gonna go ahead and just set that aside. I'm gonna go ahead and set the case aside here. That will be its own step. Has a nice little sticker here. This is Altair 8800 computer, which is nice. And then we have an IO expansion port, which we're gonna set aside. We have the Arduino Due here. This is the IO expansion card here that I'm gonna go ahead and set aside. A USB micro B cable I'm gonna go ahead and set aside. And so that leaves us with these connectors and this bag here. And let's see where we start. I'm going to go ahead and get started by installing the 1K resistors, which are here. And there we go. I've gone ahead and put in all 36 of those. It's nice to know that it actually includes a few extras here. So if for some reason one of them fails or you do a bad soldering job or something like that, uh, it's not hard to repair. These ones are little 1K resistors which are gonna go to the LEDs so they're not, they don't burn out. Next up we have 10K resistors which I believe are going to act as either pull up or pull down resistors on here. And let's go ahead and do those. Now you may be curious as to what my technique is. And I will go ahead and show you with one of these. But I tend to go ahead and line up and do like a good 10 of them or so at a time. But what I'll do is I'll take it kind of grab the ends here and just kind of pull up loosely. Then I'll go ahead and place it in the board here. Just with one and the other. While pressing on the back of it with my finger, I'll just go ahead and bend the leads to about a 45 degree angle off of what it was. And then I can let go and it's pretty good and solid here. And then for soldering, I usually use this little ventilator so I don't breathe in the rosin fumes. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you without that so you can kinda see. So I'm frequently cleaning this tip. This is actually the original tip that came with this soldering iron and I've done like hundreds of hours with it and it's still nice and clean and I've retended it a couple times but it's good but anyway so I go ahead and I place the iron right on the pad kind of against the lead here and then I bring the solder to it and then I take them both away and I just go ahead with a rapid succession and do that and you can just go really fast. I like to use this nice thin solder because it works really well for leads, but I also like to have some thicker solders. Um, sometimes like, for instance, there's gonna be some switches here and the thicker solder is gonna be really nice so you don't have to go and use up a ton of the little one. But I'm gonna go ahead and solder the 10K resistors on next. I've gone ahead and soldered all the resistors that go for the LEDs and now it's time to put the transistors on. Okay, I've gone ahead and installed all the transistors. 
Now it's um, gets a little more interesting, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave the camera on. I'm gonna go ahead and be attaching the duet. So now I've gone ahead and inserted all these into here. And I know I'm gonna be putting the board on here. Okay, next I'm going to go ahead and put the switches on. So what it looks like is I need to go ahead and remove the washer and the nuts from all these and make sure they all work good, put them in place, put the panel on, the front panel on there, and then that just kind of holds them all in place and I go ahead and I solder them. I've gone ahead and installed the switches. I'm about two hours into the build at this point. And next is to install the LEDs. So to install those, I need to install them with the spacer under them and make sure the flat edge of the LED is towards the little symbol on here. Now I'm gonna put the LEDs on and then I'm gonna put the front panel on and that makes sure that they're not kind of crooked that way. So apparently you can't tell by the LED flat side at all, because at least not with these LEDs, because this particular one, the flat side is on the long lead. I don't know if you can kind of see that there, but on this one, the flat side is on the short lead. The manual says it should be on the short lead, so I'm actually gonna go by the lead length. Now, if I put the two flat sides facing the same way on the one with the wrong one, you can see the insides are actually the opposite, which tells me the one with the flat side on the long lead is wrong. So I'm gonna go ahead and install these, and anyway, they'll end up all working. Okay, I've gone ahead and soldered all the LEDs on. Here's what it looks like so far. I'm gonna go ahead and test it out now. And then that way we can address any problems with the circuit thus far. So to test it, put on the DUA. Then you take the USB cable, and then you can either plug it into, you can really plug it into either port. Just make sure you plug it into the flat side down. Okay, so what it's supposed to do is when you plug it in, all the LEDs should flash briefly. Yep, yeah, all of them did. So they're all working. And then, wait, what does it mean by SW1? I don't even know what I'm doing to be honest. Okay. So we reset it. Ah. Okay, all the switches work too. Or at least all these ones do. Otherwise these wouldn't have been. There. We're good. Okay, so we needed to jump ahead because we are doing the IO expansion next. So basically we need to start out with installing the LEDs. 
telling these five banded ones is kind of a pain, so I'm just going to use my magic parts tester because it's easier than a multimeter. So it's a 100K resistor. It's so easy. You can put just about any part in here. It'll tell you the exact value. And I think it was like 20 or 30 bucks. Um, I think I got it right off of Amazon. I'll go ahead and put the link for the tester down in the description. It's just way too cool to hide from anyone. Really the best way to get good at soldering is just practice, practice, practice. Don't put on too much solder. Don't put on, put on just the right amount of solder. Um, come up with your own techniques, really. Surface mount's not hard either. It And there we go. It's complete. Fun part now. I get to peel all the paper off the acrylic here. And now let's go ahead and put the case together and we're going to go ahead and do a speed up. Okay, so here's an issue that they they included exactly enough bolts for it. Unfortunately, one of the bolts they included was the wrong size, and so I'm actually short a bolt. So I'm gonna have to actually cut this down by about two millimeters, because the problem is it's cracking the, I, when I tried to screw it in before, it cracked the plastic, and so it's, improperly sized. 
I know what I'm gonna do. supposed to be a little micro USB extension that attaches between the board and here which appears to be missing so I happen to have one ah, it doesn't fit okay yeah unfortunately I kind of have to stop at this point because it appears they did not include all of the parts with this, so I will continue once I get all that. So I went into Fusion 360 and I created this little adapter here. So I made it so there was enough of an inset for the screw so it could go flush against here. I had to trim the little rubber parts here in order to get for the nuts to fit, but as you can see, it's a pretty good fit. And you can tell that That plugs in here just fine. So let's continue. So here's what it looks like now with the adapter that I made. Cool, we can continue. So there's your kill the bit. Go here, here. Hi, it looks like we lost audio while I was recording. That was a few weeks ago. Um, since then, I've got the new micro USB extension cable. As you can see, I still have the old one on here. And having a 3D printer and being able to design something in a pinch is really useful. Be sure to hit like if you liked this video, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and hit the bell icon to be notified. Be sure to check out the affiliate links in the description. They help out the channel and I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in my next video.